ኣብ መንጎ ካልኣይ ደረጃ ኣብያተ ትምርቲ ዘባ ማከል ነው ህዝቀጸለ ውድራት ክተ ከከይጸን ይሎ እዚ ውድድር ኣብ መፈጸምቱ ኣብ ዘወጻሓሉ ጋዜጠኛና ሰሚር ጀማል ኣብ ተዋታ ተረኺቡ ተኻታቲሉ ወኔሮ እዚ ውድድር ባንዱ ንናይ ምግላጽ ብቓዓ ዝፈትሽ ኮይኑ ብኢንግሊዘኛ ዘቐረበ ንሎሚ ቀዳማይ ክፋል ናብ ኸምክነብሎ from as American friends of secondary school and I'd like to thank you for giving me this amazing opportunity to debate about the fact that farming is more important for national development than farming and also I'd like to thank my co-opponents and my teammates for giving such an amazing argumentative uh, debate well uh, for now uh, I had a lot of points to support the idea that farming is more important but for now since our time is limited I will present seven points and my first point is that farming is the oldest occupation in our world. The beginning of farming, that's the growing of useful plants and domestication of animals led to settled life, cultivation, and also emergence of societies. Uh, so growth in agriculture led to the exchange of agricultural products. This barter system of trade was developed. So from this we can understand that the very origin of, agri of uh, cultivation, trade, and nation building is always rooted in agriculture. And my second point is that farming is the most basic and vital occupation in our world. Well, our basic requirement of food is always produced by farming. So as the world population is growing, food security has become the highest priority for every nation and the economy. Uh, and this is because they clearly understood that when their food security is low, their nation will not be a self-dependent nation. And if a nation is not a self-dependent nation, it's always open to different inventions from different countries. Uh, so, uh, farming is more uh, is the most basic and vital occupation in our world. And my second point is that farming is the largest occupation in our world. Well, except in a very few developed nations, in most of the countries of our world, majority of the people are engaged in farming. So, the livelihood of the largest section of our world population is always engaged in agriculture. On the contrary, only less than 10% is engaged in trade. Uh, Dear audience and uh, honorable judge, why do you think that farming is, uh, majority of the people are engaged in farming, but only few are engaged in trade? Don't you agree that if farming hadn't been the basic occupation, it wouldn't also have been the, uh, the largest occupation? Yeah, I'm sure we all do. Then let me pro uh, proceed to my fourth point. My first point is that uh, farming supplies the raw materials needed by industries. Well, the trade doesn't provide the fresh and the natural raw materials. And this is because since the goods have to come a really long way, other man-made chemicals must be added. And this clearly proves that the food isn't fresh and also isn't natural. So, um, and my previous point is that, so as industrialized nation with a very well trade system, but without a well-developed agricultural section, we'll just be like a bird with one wing. So no nation can be self-sufficient and self-reliant without a well-developed agricultural sector. And my previous point is that farming brings nature and man together. Well, as we know, a man is created to live in a close relationship with nature, which is the man plants in the soil, which is the nature, and the plant grows while well, it's getting the natural nutrients it needs from uh, the soil. So, agriculture, for, so from this we can clearly conclude that agriculture is the only occupation that's done by the cooperation between man and nature. On the contrary, trade um, leads to conflict and also division of societies. My next point is that farming is the most joyful profession in our world. There is a real joy in planting and dripping, but the foundation of trade is always profit, and there can be a pure joy in profit. And the greed for cheap profit has resulted in our exploitation of our earth resources. Uh, well, Mahanta Gandhi once said that there is enough for every man's need, but there is not enough for every man's greed. And there can, be, and I'm sure we all agree to the proverb that states that there can be a pure joy in profit, as one man's profit is another man's loss. And my last but not least point is that trade promotes economic inequality. Well, capitalism and globalization has widened the gulf between the poor and the rich people. And this only benefits the rich people and makes it impossible for the poor people to even afford their daily foods. Uh, so, uh, trade uh, leads to uh, the raising of food prices and the economic inequalities. 
Um, and what I want to say is that trade gives undue advantage to some due to hard wearing, adult trading, profit wearing, and also black markets. So to conclude, farming is a noble and a basic occupation, and agriculture is the backbone of each and every nation. And uh, on the other hand, trade which is modified by profit has resulted in the raising of food prices and also economic, of, uh, economic inequalities. So money spread is denying our right to natural and healthy food. And in the madrash for keep profit and keep wealth, not only our environment, but even our fresh water and fresh air is poisoned. So, uh, and uh, nowadays the studies have uh, proved that um, people's lives are in danger as a result of consuming uh, chemicalized products. So, vital human organs like the heart, the kidney, the lungs, and the liver are now at risk. And development at the cost of our good life. Uh, of our good health is meaningless because our health is our own wealth. And thank you so much for your concentration. If you have any questions, you're free to ask. I thought in your presentation, I thought you say that the major and the most economic system at this time is dependent on agriculture, right? But nowadays, it does, if it's much and if it's big, it doesn't mean it's power. First of all, let me clear my presentation because I clearly say that farming is the most basic and vital occupation in our world. But being basic is nowadays not really important. Being developed, being higher is the main point at this time. Imagine there is plenty of money, but there is no food available. What are you going to do? You're going to trade up what you want from other countries. But what are you going to trade exactly? You are going to trade processed food, anything you want, anything you want. But the food that you are exchanging with other countries is produced by farming. Well, actually, we are talking about our homeland, our home country. We just don't need to care about the others, we are how they are about farming. Worldwide. We are not talking about our only country because our country is not the only country. Well, in the world. I thought you forgot the topic. The topic is about. So Which one is the more essential for a national development of the country? Well, the topic is farming is more important for national development than uh, for a country, but it's not for Eritrea. And we're not talking about Eritrea, not we're only talking Eritrea. about the worldwide countries. But we're not talking only about Eritrea. Let's say a country... Well, okay, just, can you just mention at least three countries which have been developed by farming only? America, Europe, and Asia. Are you kidding me? Yes. You are no, saying? I'm kidding. The United States of America, its main occupation is dependent on trade. You can watch at that all day on Wikipedia. Just it's like what I said before, farming led to settled life, cultivation, and also emergence of societies. So America developed it because of its farming, well, agricultural sector. Actually, you've been confused with that because. If you could watch that on Wikipedia, it just does, talks about that the main occupation of the United States is trading out with updated tech machines. Okay, so let me say be that. honest. America, have you ever seen America trading food from other countries? It produces it on its own land, on its land, in, on its soil, okay? And give it to its people. Which well, means she, uh, 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 the country itself depends on, uh, on the farming itself. Because it doesn't trade food with other countries, she just uh, trade them for money. Well, she you have to focus only on in specified countries. You are talking about USA, you don't need to care about others, what their economic system is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, respected judges, audiences, students and teachers. My name is Yuan Olga. I am from Kehbahara Comprehensive Secondary School in Grade 10. And I'm really glad to be here and I really want to say thank you for giving me this chance to present in front of you about my topic. Well, my topic is about trade being more influential and influential for a national development of a country than farming. Well, let's go ahead into my topic, but first, let's start with the definition. So, when we try to define trade, trade is almost part of us. Trade is a quintessential thing for human life. So we can simply say that trade is all we need. Trade is good for a more national development than farming. Well, the reasons I'm saying that is first, trade builds communication between people. 
and communication is a huge matter, a huge matter of development. Well, if there is sharing of ideas, sharing of new things, then I can see no reason that development cannot take a part in here. Well, the second point is about people's need. People's need can be satisfied and people's need can be fulfilled with the help of trade. That is true. Let's suppose some farmers in a country. Well, those farmers have to sell up some of their products in order to get money, and with that money they can buy what they need. And a really, really vital point to remember in here is that money and trade are like close friends. Well, if this is what is going to happen, then those farmers have to sell up and they have to trade up, or otherwise they have to live like the primitive societies we're living. And if each and every person of the country is living like this primitive, like this old ways, then expecting of a national development is like expecting a goat to fly. Well, certainly we can talk about the updated tech machines that can be imported into our own homeland with the help of trade. And we all know that nowadays, updated tech machines are components of industries, and industries are components of development. Well, the historical investigations shows that the vast and significant development started with the start and with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. So from this, we can learn and we can see that these industries and updated tech machines are components of development, which is made possible by trade. So trade is something else that we can't even imagine, isn't it? Definitely it is. Other important point we can talk about in here is about trade being a key for a development in the past and in the here, in present. And it can be a future for us. Let's just see, just talk about the history of other countries. In the past, those countries were using development, uh, farming, and they didn't have any, any development of that. But when trade exists, new things were forming, and new is always new. Development is there. Countries like Ghana, like Mali, were at the medieval ages. They became really developed nowadays because of trade. And when we try to talk about the modern times, those countries like Dubai, Japan, the US, and the Singapore became the biggest thing, the biggest developed countries of all, which is really dependent, that depended on trade. Other important point we can talk about is about the new things that can be learned with the help of trade. Let's take an example, shall we? Let's say country X is about to make an international trade with first world countries like US. So that country X can learn so many things, millions of thousand things from US like um, economic system, money management, way of living, social and cultural complexity and others. And if this country X could apply all these things, then I can see no reason this country cannot be like USA. There is no reason for that. So that, we all know that countries like USA are a distant development. And I remember once Vice Presidents and Presidents of United States of America proposed that United States is the biggest and is and will always be the greatest country of all. And this means, as we are saying that country X is going to be like USA with time, then what it's going to be proposed is like country X is and will always be the greatest country of all. Isn't that awesome? I'm pretty sure it is. Well, the next point we, that can be discussed in this era of talking is about the inventions that were made possible by trade. Yes, inventions were made possible by trade. Trade made people to think more deep and deeply. That they made them to make some inventions. Let's take an example. First, there was a barter system of trading, which is kind of a difficult way of trading. But after that, people were thinking more and they could invent some new things, like the metallic money existed and the paper money after that. But people didn't stop by this. They were inventing more so that this credit card system and these checks were invented. And the most recent invention and the most modern invention that was made possible by trade is the network system money. Have you ever heard of that? If not, let me tell you. This network money system is like using your smartphone with the help of network that is highly secured to use your money. 
which is this means using simplest devices to use the bigger things. This is really good, isn't it? This is all made possible by trade. So trade made people to be so creative, to be so capable. So just and if a country is having like those people, like those creative people, then the national development of that country is in its palm of its head. The last but not the least point we can talk about in here is about the other development factors that are dependent on trade. Yes, like the transportation system, the medical service, and others. These all are dependent on trade. When you try to take an example, let's say a country is having uh, doctors who are not that much experts in having no transportation system. But that country doesn't worry that much. Because these problems can be solved within a fraction of minutes. How? The answer is simple. We can use our trade. Trade is all we need. Shall we see it one by one? First, we were talking about the transportation system. So this country can trade out with automobiles so that all problem is solved about the transportation system. Secondly, it was we were talking about the doctors so that this country may trade out with expatriates. So it can be simply as a great thing as it is. So we can simply just propose that this country is the greatest thing with the help of trade. And trust me, if each and every country of this world could use our with trade, then it would be a new thing, a new world would be formed. I'm really glad and felt respected to listen to me this carefully, and if you have any questions, you're welcome. Thank you. And my first question is that, uh, if I'm, uh, how can you say that trade promotes in national development when trade promotes economic inequality? Well, actually, I just explained the seven main points are the best answers for your question, that what you want can be traded out from other countries. What you want can be fulfilled, as I have explained in my second point. But it has widened the gap between the poor and the rich people. If, uh, let's just say, 20% of the uh, world population is, uh, are traders and the, uh, the remaining 80% are not, what but, are you going to do with the remaining 80%? Well, the point in here is not talking about each and every person in a country. We are talking about the whole country. And if this whole country could be developed, then I can see no reason each and every person could be involved in trade. And that's the, the reason. So may I finish up first? Well, that's the reason that these insurance companies and others were made in order to solve the problems of this trading. Sure you will. Well, eighty per uh, well, hundred percent of a country makes up a full country. Yes. And e if eighty, if it's uh, the eighty percent of one country are poor, how is the nation going to develop? We're not talking about conditionals now. We're not using if. We're using if is not just can, ne can never bring a piece of development. We have to how apply is the it. Gonna and you can't say just eighty percent cannot be poor. If all of those people could use our trade, then. I can see no reason that this cannot be possible. But the 80% are farmers, and what you're saying is that farmers... And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. These people don't need to have these farmers. With the help of that country, they could be traders so that everything they want could be filled How can a nation develop when 80% of its population are down, when only 20% are traders? That's what we're talking about. Can't you understand me? I am talking about if the country could involve all of these people in trade, then the country would be developing. What a government benefits from trade when only uh, less than 20% uh, are traders? Well, this 20% can brought up and can change into 100% with time. Uh, if they could work hardly, if yeah. they could trade what they want, if they could sat satisfy their people with their necessities. But what are they going to trade? They are going to trade for processed food. They are going to trade. And the for processed food is produced by what? By industries. Of yeah, course. but how is it going to the industries? Well, are you just going to put the, man, uh, the food on the machine? Actually, let's say this country is, is having this buying of processed food. This country is using trade. That is, is it using farming? Yes, it is. Oh, come on. Because the basic of the food supply is produced by farming. Well, it doesn't produce. Listen, Just it like doesn't produce, says. but it trades. 
It only trades. Okay, let's say you traded them for money. There is plenty of money. You have plenty of money, but there is no food available. What are you going to do? What are you going to feed your people? That's where I'm saying we can solve this problem by trade. We can trade everything we want. Like what? I told you before. No, like... you didn't. You're just getting in the circle. Wait, I'm not just getting Running in the circle. Just... We're are. talking about the new things that could be brought on. Say I, how many I, many say I.